In roles as author, associate dean for academic affairs, chair of the public relations department, and full professor of public relations at Syracuse University and subsequently the University of Maryland, Dr. Elizabeth Toth has inspired and enlightened many minds in the public relations industry. Toth has received numerous grants and awards for her work. She has published over 75 articles, book chapters, and papers and served as editor of the Journal of Public Relations Research, Journalism Studies, and Rhetorical and Critical Approaches to Public Relations. Toth has co-authored Women and Public Relations, How Gender Influences Practice, and The Velvet Ghetto, The Increasing Numbers of Women in Public Relations. Toth also received the National PRSSA Outstanding Advisor Award and the PRSA's Outstanding Educator Award. Toth holds a B.A. in Speech from Northwestern University and an M.A. and Ph.D. in Communication from Purdue University. A definition would be the ability to uh, focus on a mission, to gather people together, to uh, actually create actions to achieve goals and objectives. And I think um, that can emerge uh, in different people at different times, given different situations. I had a chance to observe Pat as the president of the Public Relations Society of America and as one of our best trainers, one of our best people for professional development. He was both intellectually gifted but also had a ch he had the ability to inspire and to really make you want to do the best that you could do. This was a tough one, too, because there are lots of people that I could name. I wanted to first start with Betsy Plank, uh, not because she's uh, the person that named this Center on Leadership, but because she really, in her many years of being a le leader in our field, has been a visionary, has always done the right thing, but has included people, has identified uh, the best in people, has really brought out the best in people in order to achieve goals for public relations. But I could also mention John Palusak, who is also a former president of the Public Relations Society of America. He is a much gentler person, uh, a quiet commander, who again is able to listen to all points of view, but then to move us forward, to find the consensus and uh, move us forward to goals. Well, I do want to pick Pat Jackson because, first of all, he was knowledgeable, but he valued knowledge, and he insisted that we build the knowledge in the field. And he was also able to distill it for everyone so that it wasn't just academic uh, jargon, but it was translated in a way that made the practice better. I don't think they're different. I do think that there are many similarities, but I'd like to choose two that I think are distinct. One is the ability to communicate well, uh, to, in other words, use the skills uh, to create messages, to, bring, to understand feedback, to uh, create ways of building relationships, and I claim that for public relations as distinct. Uh, the other is uh, to consider the values that are, um, I think, part of any decision-making process. Public relations does bring the conversation of values to the table, morals, beliefs, expectations, obligations, and I think that leaders in public relations must understand that dimension to be successful. I think so because each organization has a different culture and it has different goals and objectives. I don't think I would do well in a corporate setting. I have more skills, I think, in a nonprofit setting. 
where there is more need to build collaborative relationships, there is less need to do things quickly and in a hierarchical way. So I think that I wouldn't be very successful in authoritarian settings or corporate settings where decisions have to be made very quickly with a small group of people. I do better with big groups of people and with the problems always changing. I think the most important thing as I reflect on my own leadership is how it took a while for me to know who I was really well and the kinds of things that were important to me and my own values. Those things don't start to emerge until I think you are out of school and you get into different situations, different problems that have to be solved and you sort of find out what you're made of and what's comfortable for you. And if in fact you find yourself able to uh, be cool, to uh, focus on the problem at hand, I think those are things that those talents start to emerge or you become more conscious of them. And that's what I would ask or recommend to young professionals is that they just learn who they are as they work through various jobs and settings in public relations. And they'll see whether or not these kinds of talents are there and if uh, they warm to them after they really actually want to illustrate them or exhibit them in their work. Well, what I try to do is actually put students in leadership positions. We have teamwork and group work in our upper level undergraduate classes and graduate classes. And sometimes it's really challenging to let groups have the time to develop their leadership or let leadership emerge. And you do have to stand back and let them fail as much as succeed. And to point it out, to make it safe to fail or make it safe to be successful and to really again stand back and see why you were successful and what did it take to be successful. Well, I think that I see a lot of it being inherited, that it is something that is part of your personality. That's why I think Many people can be leaders because they have personality traits that really assist in situations where problems have to be solved and groups have to move forward. The other part of me would say that it can be taught, that you can observe leadership in action, you can study what people have said about leadership, again to kind of be more conscious of your own style and whether or not you have observed that in yourself in different situations. So in some ways, you can put people in situations where they can be, again, more conscious and aware of, of the things that they can bring to the table. One of the areas of research that I conduct is on the influence of gender on the field of public relations. We've been concerned that because the field is now predominantly female, that we will lose these opportunities for leadership, that organizations will have a preference for males and they won't recognize the leadership talents that women have. So I, I think that I'm very sensitive to the idea that we don't have enough leaders. I think we have plenty of people with plenty of talent but there may be some biases in the choice of leaders uh, based on gender and, uh, or based on other kinds of demographic characteristics. So we have to really, again, be conscious that we're not falling into stereotypes and limiting the choices that really may be out there for us. I wanted to give an illustration of where there were leadership talents that emerged in a group. And it's one of my favorite examples because it 
goes to the idea that nothing is etched in stone. When uh, Syracuse University lost 35 undergraduates because of the uh, terrorist attack of the Pan Am 103 plane over Lockerbie, Syracuse University was um, inundated with media and also uh, activist groups made up of parents and friends of the students that were lost. The activist groups in the beginning were very negative and created pressures for the university.